Beautiful people of the Most High God, I hope this message reaches you in good health and strength. Beautiful people of the Most High God, I just came to realization that my video before had no sound. And this teaching from God is essential, so I had to do it again. And I hope you get the message, and I hope this blesses you with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and edification. Here we go. So the lesson in the teaching today is tail bearers and busy bodies. So God doesn't want us to be associated with friends, family, you know, neighbors, associates, co-workers that go about bearing, being a tail bearer and a busy body. Well, whether you people you know, people who just love to carry news, carry go bring come. Because if they're talking about others to you to make themselves look good, then they're talking about you to others to make themselves look good. This is a sin. This is against God, and this is not something God wants his people to be doing. It is actually a sin going about being a tail bearer. So I'm going to break down the scriptures as I thought I did in the other video, but there was absolutely no sound, which is not good for you because you need to hear it. You need to hear the message. Well, beautiful people of God, here we go. So Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16, thou shall not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So we're not supposed to go up and down talking people's business and other people's neighbor business, not even our neighbors. It is a sin. It's a commandment from God in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. So God wants us to separate from people who we know, whether it be friends, whether it be family, whether it be acquaintances, whether it be neighbors who go about being a tail bearer among their people, all right? Because they're so in discord. And you know, people like to put their little twist on things to make people look bad and to make themselves look good. Now, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19, he that goes about as a tail bearer reveals secrets. So people you see who go up uh, up and down talking people's business, they always got something to say about people, they reveal secrets. And if they're your friend or family or whoever they are to you that you know operates like that, then they're revealing your secrets too. If they talk about people behind their back, they talk about you too. Therefore, meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. So they flatter you with talking bad about people. And God says, meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. So you got to discern with the p company you keep. Show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. You understand? So if they're talking about other people, they're doing the same thing to you, whether you know it or not. Just like they told you not to tell, they're telling someone else not to tell. Now the first book of Peter chapter four, verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or a busybody in other man's matters. God wants you to be about his business, about your own business. You shouldn't have no time to be busybodying and tail bearing and up and down in people's business. Not at all. That That is not, the, the, and God also wants you to associate yourself with people who uplift you. People's mouth who, sp who, br who speak life into you. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and edifying, edification. Those are the type of people that you should be surrounding yourself with. Those are the type of friends and family and neighbors that you should be surrounding yourself with. Those ones who speak life into you. Who give you knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and edification. People you could learn from. All right? What can you learn from people slandering and gossiping and telling people's business? You can't learn nothing but that. You cannot learn anything from that. And that is not what their mouth is used for. It's supposed to be used for. That's not what God created their mouth for. They're not opening their mouth in wisdom. They're not opening their mouth in knowledge. They're not opening their mouth in understanding. They're not opening their mouth in grace. They're not opening their mouth in edifying. They're opening their mouth to tear another person down. This is not the type of people you should be associating with. God is telling you meddle not with them. Now, the first book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 13, and withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. So this is people who go about from house to house, carrying news, carry, go, bring, come, being busybodies and 
in people's business and speaking things they have no business speaking. Now, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19, he that goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. They're trying to flatter you talking bad about people. That is not people you should be associated with. Old gossipers, old tattlers, old news carriers. Now, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20, where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there's no 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 tail bearing, there's no there's no wood, there's no f the fire goes out. So where they're not carrying people's business, there will be no strife there. So where there is no tail bearer, strife ceases. So when they're out there tail bearing and bringing biz people's business from house to house, th they stir up strifes. As cool. Proverbs 26 and 21, as coals are to the burn, are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. So these people who go about being tail bearers, they sow discord and they sow strife. And it's a con they're a contentious man and a contentious woman. They don't they don't care to kindle that strife with ta tail bearing and being busy bodies in other people's business. They're a contentious man. And they're a contentious woman. That's why they kindle that type of strife. Words, Proverbs 26 and 21, the words of a talebearer are as wounds. So they're, they're trying to hurt somebody. They're trying to wound somebody's reputation. They're trying to wound somebody's character. And they go down to the innermost parts of the belly. A talebearer. That is what they do. And they're trying to flatter you with your tongue. And what does God tell us about flattery? We're going to go into that too, which we've, we've spoke about before, but this all goes hand in hand. When they're, they're, they're bringing their being busy bodies in people's business, they're trying to flatter you with their tongue. They're speaking with gill. Now, Psalms 5 and 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sculpture. They flatter with their tongue. They're flattering you. God will cut out all flattering lips. Don't let anybody flatter you to demean somebody else's character. Because they're doing the same thing to you. Show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. Psalms 12 and 2. They speak vanity everyone to his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as you know, nor cloak of covetousness, God is witness. So when these people are using these flattering words, talking down on people to you, they, they, they want to covet something from you. There's something that you have that they want to continue getting. Now, the first book of Peter chapter three, verse 10, for he that will love life and see good, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no gill. Psalms 32 and 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no gill. Now Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, that where, whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of God, of the gospel. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. How are people supposed to open up their mouth in edifying, in knowledge, in wisdom, in understanding, in grace? To edify you, to uplift you, to comfort you. You understand? People are not supposed to be talking down on other people, bringing in, coming to talk, gossip to you about other people, being some tail bearer and some busybody in other people's affairs. That can't help you. Are they opening up? Are they enlightening you with logic, with intelligence, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They're trying to tear another person down. The first book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Even so, 
ye, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. What should you seek to excel in edifying? Edifying others. And we're going to talk about edification. Now, the first book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 4, wherein they think when you're not a busybody and a tail bearer and backbiter and up in people's business and you focus on your own business, wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the, the same excess of right speaking evil of you. When you don't be up in people's business, you got some people who think you're strange and they go about speaking evil of you because you're not some busybody up in other people's affairs. Now, edifying, that is how you're supposed to open up your mouth. In the first book of Corinthians, I mean the second book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 19. Again, think you not that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we all, but we do all things dearly, beloved, for your edifying. Why are these people talking to you about other people? Is that increasing your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? No, absolutely not. Is that enlightening you? Is that comforting you? Are there sowing discord and strife? Are there planting seeds in your head about another person? Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. <clears throat> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. I said that. Now, first book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. How is it then, Bretchen? When you come together, every one of you has a psalms, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Not to be boasting up yourself that I, I know. You understand? It's supposed to edify. God's word is supposed to edify and teach, but also the people you know. Now, Ephesians chapter 14, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. These, you don't need to hear people talking nonsense in your ears. That's nonsense. And God doesn't want you to be partakers with such people because they do the same thing to you. Now, the first book of Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. Them tail bearing and busy bodies ain't edifying you to enlightenment. Absolutely not. They're actually stunting your growth. You can't grow from them. You can't mature from that type of behavior. That's immature behavior. That's low vibrational. But somebody who, who opens up their mouth with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding logic, intelligence, you can learn from. You can apply it to your life. You can be blessed by that. The more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding you don't, the more open doors you can have. Remember, wisdom is the principal thing. Do these people open up their mouth in wisdom when they're coming to tell you people's business? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Those are the things we should be seeking after, things that make for peace and things where we can edify one another, not how we can tear down another person. That is absolutely not what we're supposed to do. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be speaking with guilt in our mouth. Now, we're going to talk about the gill. Now, what, what happened with Christ? The first book of Peter, chapter 2 and 22. Who did no sin, whether neither was gill found in his mouth. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and gill depart not from her streets. Now, in Revelations chapter 14 and 5, 
This talks about the first fruits of the first fruits of God, and in their mouth was found no guilt, for they were they are without fault before the throne of God. Now the first book of Thessalonians chapter two verse three, for our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guilt. Now two Corinthians chapter twelve verse sixteen. But be it so, I did not burden you, nevertheless being crafty. When people are talking with like that, they're being crafty and deceitful. I caught you you're not you're not speaking with guilt when you're you shouldn't be speaking with guilt. You shouldn't be trying to flatter people with your words. Now John, the first book of John, John chapter one, verse forty seven. When Christ saw Nathanael come unto him and, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guilt. Now Psalms 32 and 2, Blesses the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guilt. Now Exodus twenty one fourteen, But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guilt, thou shalt take him from my altar, that he may die. You know, there's, there's people who slay their neighbor with their guilt from, guiltful mouth. Psalms 34 and 13, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guilt. If you want long life, if you love life and you want to see good days, refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guilt. Now, the first book of Peter chapter 2 verse 1, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speaking what 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 can you learn from evil speaking nothing absolutely nothing that should go out of one ears and out the other I'm just looking for the scripture now we didn't use flattering words in this speech, but God, I have to go to this scripture. Psalms chapter 12, verse 3. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. Job 32 and 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. Because when people flatter you, they can force you to do their will. Proverbs 7 and 21, just like the strange women, strange women do to men who are without understanding. With her much fair speech, she caused them to yield. With, her flatter, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Do, do not be deceived with people's flattering tales. Psalms 36 and 2, for he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Now, Proverbs 28 and 23, he that rebukes a man afterwards shall find more favor than he, than he that flatters with the tongue. Now, Proverbs 2 and 16, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even the stranger which flatters with her words. And we know they go about Speaking things they ought not. Proverbs 20 and 19. He that goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. Absolutely not. Even Proverbs tells you about the strange woman. Seductive women who flatter man with their words. That's all. They could take men for everything they got. Flattery. Psalm, Proverbs 7 and 5, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatters with her words. They even try to flatter God. I don't know why this, it came, it was in my other video, but it had no sound. Pretty sure it's cha um, Psalms chapter 30, I mean 78. No, it's not. Is it 79? I don't know why it didn't come up here, but I hope I get it. But yeah, basically, some people flatter, try to flatter God when they know to do an evil. When they know to do an evil. I think it's, maybe it's 73. I hope I get this right. No. 
No, where is it? What's going on here? This is 74, so I'm 70. It's in the other video, but it had no sound. But yeah, so basically, you shouldn't be entertaining those kind of people. Absolutely not. Oh, I'm just trying to look for the scripture. People of God, forgive me, give me a second. Okay, this might be the work of the enemy. So anyways, what I will say is that video was really good. The first one that I did, I just came back to do it again. And I don't want to rear off, but it was just something in Psalms where God had me speak in the other video about people flattering with their tongue. They flatter even him and he forgives them because he knows that they're just flesh. But it is a sin. We are not supposed to be busybodies in other people's business, nor be a no tear bearer, no carry go bring from, bring come, going from house to house, speaking people's business and in other man's affairs. We're supposed to be about God's business. We're supposed to open our mouth in wisdom, knowledge and understanding and edifying and praise and comforts. You understand? Leviticus 19 and 16, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. But God tells you do not meddle with people who you know are like that because they're doing the same thing to you and it's a sin. Stay blessed, beautiful people. I love you all and I hope this message gave you knowledge, wisdom and understanding and edification. Because this message is supposed to enlighten and edify. And let the people that you know speak life into you. Those are the people you should associate with. The people who speak knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And comfort you. And they open up their mouth in, in wisdom. Alright? I love you all. Stay blessed. Take care.